Good morning and welcome to the day's products in focus. US 30 managed to almost reach uh, quite close to an all-time high yesterday, um, getting to potential resistance at 17,998. Though to be fair, we do need to uh, re-highlight the top tip of this level here on the 26th of December, uh, which is just a little bit above 18,107, as that will be the next potential resistance. The US market already has been down a lot lower this morning and has made up some lost ground. It's quite a volatile start to the session, lots of volatility actually just towards the end of their session last night and again this morning because you can see we're already off the session lows and pushing on that little bit higher. Um, new, I guess the big news that everybody's kind of digesting today is that um, Greece and the Eurozone leaders did not come to any type of agreement uh, that they were past 12 o'clock last night. Um, the Euro was quite volatile. Um, late on the session last night as it looked like they were going to potentially uh, come out with a joint statement that didn't happen uh, which involved a little bit more volatility market still seems to think that even though there'll be lots of shouting about this that eventually a deal will be reached um, and certainly the moves that we're seeing in the uh, across most of the markets this morning seems to kind of back that up that eventually we will come to some sort of deal uh, and the US 30 having had a particularly good session uh, there yesterday is certainly on the up so looking at the UK 100, um, these four last sessions, uh, just since Monday, these long legged candles are indicative of very strong support, quite close to potential uh, support at 6771. Um, these were all kind of hammer formations after a little bit of a mini sell off. Uh, so kind of an unusual series of patterns to see actually from a candlestick perspective for it not to eventually push up higher uh, when you have these um, these formations right here. But long, longer term potential resistance of an all time high is at 6906.8 and looking at these candles here should agree still be reached and I think they have to this week to do it maybe till Monday um, the UK 100 looks to be well positioned to take advantage of that so moving on to Japan 225 uh, another good session yesterday uh, with a little bit of profit taking this morning uh, dollar yen comfortably above 120 I up 121. We'll come back to dollar yen in a minute. Uh, as that dollar yen pair begins to continue to move north, um, and obviously above 121 and change opens up 124. Uh, Japan 225 has a very good possibility of breaking through the next potential resistance at 18306. But obviously, it depends on the current macro fundamental data coming out of the US, which will drive that dollar yen, and obviously over in Japan as well, especially if they embark on more stimulus, which isn't planned, but you never know. So looking at Japan, uh, dollar yen, we actually closed at the top end of yesterday's range. Very bullish end to the session, um, but we've not had too much follow through this morning. 121 spot 87 is the December high, uh, and that's around about the 8th of December that that was done. Then after 121.87 is 124.42. So um, we have a long way to go before we actually get to the top end of that dollar yen potential resistance level, but um, we have broken out of a quite a you know a multi month consolidation area so there certainly seems to be some uh, bullish intent in that moving dollar yen. The fundamentals certainly support a dollar versus the uh, Japanese yen, um, but not so much versus GBP and uh, euro dollar at the moment. So moving on to crude oil West Texas, uh, crude oil inventories again smashed West Texas, record um, amounts of store of, of, of stocks and storage. Uh, of, uh, of crude right across the US. That caused about a 3.5% drop uh, and that's taking the pressure off a little bit uh, from news that uh, OPEC and non-OPEC countries might be meeting at some point soon to discuss the current oil price and the deteriorating situation in Libya and obviously what's happening over in Ukraine as well which is adding a little bit of support onto, onto crude. Um, we're off the session lows from yesterday uh, but we're not really moving uh, that strongly in one direction right now. On the intraday charts, it's it's creeping forward, um, but it's worth keeping an eye on. So looking at gold, gold continues to feel the pain. Uh, had a real bad day yesterday, actually closing towards the bottom of its range, breaking below uh, the 55 period SMA. We're currently at support at 12.18. And uh, I think that's why we're going to continue to see a little bit more momentum in dollar yen. Uh, like gold is giving the signals that people are expecting a stronger USD and higher interest rates. Why it's not really impacting cable and euro dollar is an interesting one. Um, but from an F FX perspective, uh, if I look at euro yen or uh, dollar yen and then have a look at gold, uh, that perhaps gives us what we need to know about the intention of the markets and the US dollar going forward. So the fact that this is broken key levels and the two 
separate uh, long and short SMAs and if you have a look at the technical indicators here there's actually still further room for maneuver to the downside uh, we're not even into oversold territory yet we could be looking at 118.86 should that support level be broken uh, and as the US data continues to actually impress after the non-farm payrolls last week that's what people are really looking for today uh, there's a lot of macroeconomic data out of Europe and the US today and should the US continue to uh, revitalize itself in regards to these data releases um, dollar yen and gold will be the ones to watch so moving on to euro dollar this one has perplexed ever so slightly looking at these candles I think until we actually get a decision out of the eurozone euro dollar is not going anywhere um, it's actually apart from these four days here between the third and the and the sixth it's been pretty flat around about 113.24 and with the macro data today, maybe we might get a little bit more direction, but I think until the, um, the Eurozone and Greece come to some sort of agreement, um, nothing's really going to change there. So looking at cable to finish things up, again, one spot 51.85 seems to be the level. We've been below it, we've been slightly above it, but we've always been hugging around about this level as the moving averages begin to flatten out ever so slightly. Technicals still have room for manoeuvre, so we, we could be looking at the next potential resistance, one spot 54.24. Uh, if the sterling manages to continue its upwards momentum, um, failing that one spot 48.13 is the next potential support as ever. Not much else to change here. So economic data wise, we've already had some data at the US, uh, of Germany all coming in as expected, that's slightly boring. But moving on to industrial production, that's due at 10. Um, make sure that you have your alarm set for that. Matter of fact, I've got to set my reoccurring alerts for, for that one, no problem. And then we've got the US employment data at 130 and retail sales at, at 130 as well. So some decent bits there. And then Friday, we've actually got a couple of bits. You've got um, German GDP, Eurozone GDP, and then to finish things up, not as important as perhaps it once was, but you've got the University of Michigan Sentiment Index data due out at 3 p.m. UK time. As, a, as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights popular going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.